Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy uh, Tuesday. Today is officially, for me, the first day of winter. Yesterday was 65 degrees in New Jersey. Like the high of the day today was like 32. I'm freezing outside, absolutely freezing. It's now dark, okay? Whoever's making Prozac, whoever's making volumes, pass them over, right? Volumes, put, pass it over. This is gonna be a long ass winter. So we gotta make the best of it, right? We got holiday time coming up. Uh, markets, you know, in, in holiday mode. There's nothing has changed. There's no reason uh, nightly now to start, you know, talking about all the uh, all the ways we could describe this kind of melt up. Uh, right now, we are in no fear mode. Okay, we're in no uh, macro news mode. Okay, there's absolutely no reason to dissect every single day of the market anymore until things change. And again, uh, sometimes the most simplistic way of view the market is. Well, buyers will keep on buying until they stop. And I know it sounds simplistic. I know it sounds like a six-year-old can, can, can murmur those words, but that's reality. Until things stop going up, right? That's only when they'll go down. And that's kind of what we're seeing now. And there's, a, and there's a noticeable rotation every single day, whether you're trading biotechs, whether you're trading high beta names, some of the biotechs are high beta, but the most consistent part of this market is any week open gets bought, uh, any weakness gets bought, any headline gets bought. And again, we are two weeks away from uh, Thanksgiving, right? Two weeks away from Thanksgiving. Uh, we had Trump speaking today at lunchtime. You know, again, even if you missed it, this doesn't really make a difference what he said. China talks are going great. Uh, he's the reason for the market being at all time highs. I'm obviously joking. Don't care one way. I'm not a Trump fan. I'm not a Trump hater. I'm supportive of the president. I'm supportive of any single president because he is, right? He is controlling the ship. So you have to root for the, the you know, the captain of the ship. So hopefully, whatever the reason is, the market is continue to move up. God bless. Keep on moving. Certain days, again, are going to be much more aggressive than others. Uh, you know, we talked about this in the live webinar all the time. You know, you're going to have uh, two, three churning out days. You're going to, you know, you're going to have to wait and sit and patiently wait for your spots and, you know, scalp away like we've we've seen, uh, like we saw today, and then you're going to see days that, well, the channels are expanding. We see this a lot of times on Thursdays, although Mondays, yesterday was a, a pretty aggressive day. Um, but we've seen that the more aggressive days, the more expanded channel days are usually now uh, set for Thursdays and Fridays. That's where we're getting closer to uh, speculation. Uh, and speculation money bets, weekly expiration, all that good stuff. And again, the, the more we go higher and higher and higher, it becomes harder and harder to find value. But the stocks that are, are higher, they're the ones that are getting the aggressive money flow, especially towards the end of the week. So, you know, these days I'm just much more relaxed. Uh, ever since I took that mental break on Sunday, my first, literally my first day off of doing nothing in about a decade, um, it really did energize me. And uh, came Monday, I was super focused. Uh, came today, I was super focused. Uh, again, I'm not tired. Um, I'm thinking straight. I'm not making any uh, poor reads. The more important part is I understand what happens when a channel expansion and what that day looks like. And, and if you look at today's day, again, there's nothing, uh, nothing random about what we do. There's, you know, again, the only difference is certain names I can't trade because of liquidity. Uh, for example, like the biotech names, you know, we had some pretty good pivots today on a couple of biotech names. I couldn't trade them. I can't trade these stocks to trade in a 50 cent spread with 100 share lots. It's just, it's just impossible. But again, it's not my comfortability. It's your comfortability. It's whatever you feel like trading. I feel comfortable trading Netflix and Amazon and Tesla and Roku uh, and uh, Alibaba in the video. If you feel comfortable trading SE, if you feel comfortable trading REGN, again, it doesn't make a difference. It's all about self comfortability. It doesn't make a difference if you're trading a two thousand dollar stock, a two dollar stock, or anything in between. It's about you feeling comfortable in the setup. And again, doesn't make a difference to me. It's all about 
putting value in front of you. And that's why I believe the whole quote unquote stock alert system, it, it's a flawed system. Again, how can, how can you be possibly comfortable in trading somebody else's value? It just, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense technically. It doesn't make emotionally. And again, no two traders are built the same. So how can you possibly try to emulate another person's, especially comfortability? So going into tomorrow, again, it's the same thing. Look for, look for weakness on strong names to buy, right? Like a Facebook, for example, you know, big, big move today. Anytime again, where you have uh, a very, very aggressive mood followed by a light open washout, you want to buy stocks into, in, into support. I mean, this is what happened uh, with Microsoft just 24 hours ago, right? We talked about uh, the dip in the rising minute channel. We talked about the 46 uh, confirmation and da, 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 stock went to 47.57. Again, congratulations for all you guys uh, who did come in uh, long Microsoft. So again, business as usual. Um, you know, I scalped them for the most part. Um, I think what's going to happen Thursday and Friday, we're going to start to get really, really good expansion channels. Uh, I'd like to see Roku kind of rest a little bit. I would like to see Amazon kind of wake up a little bit. I'd like to see kind of Google wake up a little bit. Uh, Apple's been now digesting gains for several days. You can see uh, by the 60 minute channel, right? This is good, right? This is for a couple of days, which is good considering it's in on big, big linear move. Again, is the value up here? Probably not. But again, the longer a stock consolidates in a linear channel, the better chance towards the late of the week, it's going to wake up. Same thing, for example, on Boeing, had a big, big move yesterday, and today's just consolidating. Again, you can see this Bollinger Band coming down. You can see the setup coming in right here. Obviously, you guys already know uh, where the setup is going to be. But again, you have to like the action. Uh, the rotation is pretty obvious. Weak names are waking up, like a Roku. Uh, after earnings, like a Facebook that was dead in the water after earnings, kind of woke up. Uh, every single day, Netflix tries to wake up, and then all of a sudden you get hit with news either on Disney or in this one and that one. And again, look, there's plenty of money in the streaming business, okay? I, I can't imagine that the Disney crowd, okay, the Bambies, the, you know, the Snow White and the, the Seven Dwarfs, are going to cancel their subscription to Netflix, okay? And they and they're gonna say, you know what? I don't want to see Narcos. I don't want to see Ozark. And by the way, is Ozark ever gonna come back? Okay. I don't want to see, you know, where Porn Stars Three are, right? I don't want to see, you know, it's a different platform, okay? If you like Star Wars, God bless, okay? God bless, okay? It's a different platform. I, I think Netflix again based on the action we're seeing, has to wake up. You saw these, you know, you saw the high that Citron put in on their tweet. It's consolidating. I like it. I just can't get this thing going because again, just all these circular headlines of, of streaming wars are affecting the stock. But again, you know, you have to like it. You have to uh, trade out of the channels. And you can see yesterday was a beautiful channel uh, into supply. And now we're going to kind of just waiting for the next leg up. But again, if you look at today's activity, again, something for everybody. Uh, and the most important part, again, business as usual, going to tomorrow, uh, same formula, look for strength into strength, look into strength into weakness and all that good stuff. So let's talk about today's session. Again, nothing uh, crazy. Again, I was watching for that break uh, for Netflix just never happened, right? Just absolutely never happened. Uh, again, why it didn't happen? Because da, 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 the Mouse House launched their uh, Disney Plus. Again, did, nice move on Disney. Nothing wrong with Disney. We talked about uh, we talked about the setup right here. Uh, 138. What did we talk about? 138.60, 138.70 needs to build, and da, 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 you know, again, not, is it the biggest spike in the world? 60, 70 cents, but. Again, it's Disney. It's thick. It's not going to trade like Tesla three dollars. Again, this is a phenomenal candle, but this phenomenal candle came on earnings, came on after hours on earnings. So Disney seventy cents is like the equivalent for uh, Tesla to put up a two and a half three dollar candle. Maybe not. Maybe that a little exaggerated. But you kind of get the point. Uh, so good move on Tesla. Uh, Alibaba, I still like. Um, you know, Alibaba, I still like. I, I again, I, I'm very very surprised. Um, that the stock didn't go nuts on that announcement, that $38 billion single day announcement. I, again, I could be wrong, but it's just kind of weird that it didn't do so. Um, I, I, I like that area here, that uh, 8720. Uh, it went to like 8765, really didn't give that big move, but again, still holding its range. You know, maybe it'll be better for tomorrow. I want to keep an eye on it. It only went up like 40 cents uh, off that pivot. Uh, TTD was huge. 
absolutely huge. Uh, TTD, we talked about it. Uh, 218.75, 219 needs to build. Uh, here was TTD. Okay, here was TTD. Here was the 219. Uh, here was the 219, excuse me, here was the 219 area. What the hell is the 2? I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Here was the 219 area, right? Here's the 219 area. It just absolutely went bananas. Uh, put up a $10 candle on TTD. Uh, SC, good quarter, right? Good quarter. Uh, SC, 36 needs to build uh, to get more upside. Here was um, SE, right? Here was the 36. Uh, excuse me, here was the 36. And once it broke, it went all the way up to like 37 and a half. Again, a uh, pretty good consolidation move. Um, I, I thought this was the more, most important trade of the day, um, and it, it, it. I wound up. I wound up trading the video twice today, and both I made very very small amounts of money. But I, I, I thought this was the most impressed, the most important trade of the day. And the reason why I thought this was the most important trade of the day here is a perfect example of not guessing. Okay. Uh, this here's where I talk about screen time, especially for the newer trader. Watch the order flow after the stock confirms. So we talked about this 21050 area, and you can see this. You know, I took a snapshot of it. Pre-market, it kept on getting rejected. 21050, uh, 21050, 21050, 21050. So I got look. It rejected it four times. It got upgraded this morning. There's supply, a little bit of supply here at 1090. What you can see here. So be aware of that. But if it starts getting going. It starts breaking out 211, 212. That's the macro move needs to reclaim. So I get long, um, I get long the video, right? Um, I get long the video and the first time around, excuse me, the first time around, I get long the video, only runs up like 30 cents, right? And I knew it was going to stop where it did because here's the linear, linear regression line. I just thought, just in case, we talked about this, it wasn't a surprise. We talked about this um, at Morning Strategy that 90% of the shot, it was going to stop at that 11.24 area. So I was not I was not surprised. So I sold and made a cup of coffee. So we bought it back on the confirmation. And it started moving up. I got long uh, 11.40s. Then I bought more at 11.50. So between 11.40s and 11.50. And I knew at 11.70, 11.80 was going to be a big number. Okay, and it, it ran up, it ran up and put in a high of like 1185. Now, when a stock gets upgraded, okay, and it finally takes out an opening range high, this stock should have exploded. Because you see this 12 here, right? You guys see this 12 here, 1170, right? 1170, 1170. It stalled out there, okay, and it stalled out there for like five minutes or so. And I was up like, like 30 cents, 40, whatever the hell I was up, 30, 35 cents on the trade. It was nothing, right? It was absolutely nothing. But the reason why this was the most important part of the tr trade of the day was we knew after several minutes, like after three, four minutes, so once it didn't go, I sold it, right? I sold it, like, again, I made nothing on the trade, 25 cents, whatever it was, 20, 25 cents, whatever it was, it didn't make a difference. It's, it's irrelevant. It's not the point of the money. It's the point that we, we did not overstay our welcome. I, I saw the reload sellers that just couldn't get out of that range. They couldn't break above their range. They couldn't break above the range from uh, November the 7th, and we made a conscious choice to get out of the position, and it was a right read, and that was the most important part. It was the right read because NVIDIA went all the way back down to 208. And the moral of the story is, again, we're not in the guessing business, guys. We're not, okay? We're not in the guessing business. Uh, we're not in the hoping business. We're not in the praying business. We collect data, and if the confirmation is not there, we have to get out of Dodge. It's plain and simple, and this is why uh, I thought this was the most important uh, trade of the day. Uh, region uh, 345 needs to build. Big, big move. Again, here's a biotech name. Uh, region 345 uh, just exploded. 345 went to uh, 350. Okay. Um, and, here's, and, and, and here's where I apologize to everybody in the group. Um, so I initially put 348, right? I initially put 348 on Tesla. I said needs to build. Just a note, the cash flow. You smaller side's been on a huge run. So you'll see here up here, I turned around and I said, well, it started moving lower and I go, well, guys, now 344 is su uh, su uh, su uh, support that it needs to break because I thought the stock was a little weak. And then next thing you know, um, the stock starts getting strong. Obviously, it never broke two, 244. It's not the point of the monetary uh, conversation. It's the point of right here. I wrote, I go, look, there's no play at 348. The supply is there now. I think there's more value to the downside. Not that it's going to collapse today, but I think there's more value to the downside. And obviously, everybody knows the stock went through 348, 
went to like 349 and change, went to almost 350. So I do apologize, but again, I'm always thinking safety first. And if the stock would have got rejected, you could have lost $2 very, very quickly. Again, remember, if you don't feel comfortable in the trade, do not put it on. And I just felt for the group, uh, I felt for the group there was going to be more value to the downside, which it almost actually broke down uh, later in the day, which obviously it held that range. Uh, but again, always think safety first. So again, if I talked you out of it or if I put thoughts in your head of not taking the trade, I apologize. But again, safety always first. And that's about it. I think that's about it. So uh, productive day uh, regardless. Oh, and BYND. I took BYND. I totally forgot about BYND. Uh, BYND, it, it put in a hammer, right? It put in a hammer here. Uh, the last couple of times, it, it, it went green. It, it never... It never followed through. So I actually scalped it. We actually had a nice little scalp in this thing. We bought it right here, right? We bought it right here over this channel and it spiked into supply. I sold it and actually went up a little bit higher, but I said, all right, you know, that is what it is. I actually made money on the long side of BYND. So again, not a bad day, nothing wrong with it. Most important part, it all adds up at the end. Uh, the most important part as well, you're not burning mental equity, you're not trading uh, something that is not there. So going into tomorrow, guys, I'm obviously... Uh, pretty bullish. Okay, I'm pro probably pretty bullish until it stops. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas for uh, tomorrow's. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow's session. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.